welcome to the blessing Sunday of April we have people connected from all around the world and I believe that today is going to mark a great day with us we are going to do a responsive reading of Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 1 to verse 14 I'll read verse 1 you read verse 2 and I'll please like us to be upstanding as we read this passage and if there is any child screaming by virtue of anything, please let the ushers assist the child in liberty. And it shall come to pass if you shall diligently hearken unto the voice of the Lord your God to observe and do all his commandments which I command thee this day that the Lord thy God will set you on high above all nations of the earth. Verse 2, everybody. Blessed shall thou be in the city and blessed shall thou be in the field. Say amen. amen. Now read verse 4. Blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. Number 6. The Lord shall cause your enemies that rise up against you to be smitten before your face. They shall come against you one way and flee before you seven ways. Verse 8. The Lord shall establish you uh, and holy people unto himself as he has sworn unto you if you will keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his ways. Verse 10. Amen. And the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods. Is anybody receiving that? In the fruit of your body, and in the fruit of your cattle, and in the fruit of your ground, and in the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers to give thee. Verse 12. Say amen. And the Lord shall make you the head and not the tail. And you shall be above only and thou shalt not be beneath. If you shall hearken unto the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command thee this day to observe and to do them. Verse 14. And somebody say amen to that as well. Amen. Father, bless your word. In Jesus' name, please be seated. Speaking quickly on the subject, the blessedness of the blessing. The blessedness of the blessing of God. And our objective this morning is to understand the overwhelming advantage of the blessing and then to understand channels of the blessing the overwhelming advantage of the blessing and then to understand channels of the blessing by way of introduction it's important to know that the blessing is overwhelmingly advantageous to the life of the blessed. Overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly advantageous. That is why the title, the blessedness of the blessing was used deliberately. Blessedness of the blessing, it, it sounds tautological. But it is deliberate for the purpose of doubling the emphatic importance of the blessing in the life of the child of God. It's like saying the helplessness of the, the helpfulness of the help of God or the graciousness of the grace of God. It's like that. The 
the blessing is so vital and so critical that you will need to note the, the following. First, God had to release the blessing at creation to guarantee the future of the earth. God had to release the blessing at creation to guarantee the future of the earth. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 27 to 28 and verse 28 in particular and God blessed them and God said be fruitful multiply and so on. He had to release that is the earth would not have a future after creation without the blessing. Secondly, the covenant lineage of Abraham God established in greatness and influence by the blessing of God. That's how vital the blessing is. Abraham came from a family where nobody was making any headway. But the family, the covenant family of Abraham, God established in greatness and influence by the blessing of God. Genesis 12 and 12 to 3. And I will make of you a great nation. And I will bless you and make your name great and thou shall be a blessing. The covenant lineage of Abraham got established in greatness and influence by the blessing of God. Thirdly, the children of Israel exist on earth today as a force to reckon with in the committee of nations by the power of the blessing. The Israelites, the children of Israel, exist on earth today as a major force to reckon with in the committee of nations by the power of the blessing. When their father, Jacob, in Genesis chapter 32 verse 28, wrest wrestled with God, and he said, your name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a priest, you have power with God and with men, and you have prevailed. That is the power of the blessing. And up till today, the Jews habitually release blessing on their children. Habitually, habitually, on their children. So you have the Jews in every sphere of life. Like we, you have heard over and over again. One out of every Nobel Prize winner is a Jew. And then you have Jews who are presidents of countries. Apart from their own country. By the power of the blessing. Someone say amen. That's how critical the blessing is. Let me add two notes from contemporary times. The fourth thing to note is that children from families who receive positive affirmations and blessings from their parents, they fare better in life than children who receive only insults and curses. True. And I want parents to take note. Children from families where they receive positive affirmations and blessings, literal blessings, they fare better in life than children who receive only insults and curses. That is why you are here on this Blessing Sunday. So that in case the only thing you receive from your father and mother were curses, a superior authority can reverse it. And spiritual authority is superior to natural parental authority. I know of a family where the father cursed the children not to uselessness. All of them. He, de he derived joy in cursing his children. So, Pastor, see this one. Is this head or calabash you are carrying? See this one. Are you a person or a prostitute? He will just, just, it will, it will just be playing. He rendered all of them useless. 
Apart from those who came to embrace God, till today they are struggling. There are many children in prison today. Many of them are from such homes. Either no home at all, according to American statistics, that 60% of black boys in prison came from homes that did not exist. So be careful what you are doing and saying to your children. Somebody say amen. Somebody say it louder, amen. Somebody say it louder, amen. I also came across a story, a, 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 a study that uh, was related by Zig Ziglar, a notable speaker and also a Christian statesman. He said that even animals, dairy, dairy farmers, noticed that animals, that is cow, that had good words spoken to them in the course of milking them had higher volume of milk plus sweeter milk production. When they are milking the cow, sorry, you are a person, and is the man is stroking the owner is stroking the back. Good girl, you've been so productive. Just stroking and stroking. Milk volume increased. And the milk was sweeter. When they were continuously hitting the cow, useless, look at you. Milk was scanty and bitter. You know, everything in life happens for many reasons. There are people struggling almost to the point of death. He has first class. He couldn't succeed. Where it's are gathered, he couldn't break through. Maybe a curse came from behind somewhere. But in case you are seated here and anything like that is working against you, any word spoken against your life, either by father or mother or an authority figure that is working against your life, I stand by the mantle of God on my life. I declare it is reversed. You are saying amen. Say it louder. Amen. Take your seat. So you can see how important, how vital, how critical, how crucial the blessing is. Now, what are the deliverables or the products of the blessing? What is the blessedness of the blessing? How good is it to be blessed? Number one, the blessing consumes and dissolves curses, embargoes, and limitations from the life of the blessed. The blessing consumes, it dissipates, or dissolves curses, embargoes, and limitations from the life of the blessed. The way you turn light on and darkness dissolves in the same manner you turn the blessing on and causes dissolve that was what happened to Jacob we read in Genesis 32 verse 24 to 28 he wrestled and he said I will not let you go until you bless me Jacob had battled with a lot of struggles all his life but the blessing came and the curse was dissolved and the same way that light is more powerful than darkness the blessing is more powerful than curses am i communicating at all so if we have a blessing sunday mean, the meaning is in case a curse followed you here by the time the blessing is released upon your life the curse will dissolve and dissipate and dematerialize and disintegrate and reduce back to nothing shout power number two are you following? The blessing brings speed, speed, and acceleration into the life of the blessed. There is speed, there is acceleration. 
like I preached some time ago, it is as if the blessing connects a motion machine to the life of the blessed. And I call that motion machine a blessinator. Like an accelerator, like an alternator, like, like, like an electric machine, electric motor. It's a blessinator. That is, it's like the difference between a cano and a speedboat. Even a cano can be turned into a speedboat if the speed machine is positioned at the back of it. Am I communicating at all? The first time I entered such a thing was when, I believe it was in the year of 1989 or so, I was crossing from Ida to Agenebode. Inside, you remember the, the, the year. In, in, uh, inside, uh, from me, that side. To, uh, how many of you are from that side here? And then, and then just entered and then they on the machine and then the, the speedboat just... <laughs> by the time you are on that speedboat, when you have reached the other side, the person paddling with the canoe is still on the way coming. He's still on the way coming. You have gone. You have returned back. Maybe gone and returned back again. The person is still going. That is the difference between a man who carries the blessing. He is like a speedboat. And the one who is on his own is struggling like a canoe man. That was what happened to Isaac in Genesis 26 verse 12. And the Lord blessed him. He sold in that land and received the same year and hundredfold. And the Lord blessed him, verse 13. And the man was great. And by the blessing, he went forward. And grew until he, become, he became very great. So the blessing is a destroyer of stagnation. It's a destroyer of delay. You cannot be blessed and be a victim of delays. You cannot carry the blessing and be a victim of stagnation. And I speak to someone here. Every stagnation that came here with you and the spirit of delay. Delay to get married. Delay to get a child. Delay to get a job. Delay to fulfill your destiny. By the blessing, it is destroyed. Take your seat in, in, in the presence of the Lord. Number three, the blessing changes the climate around the life of the blessed. You have heard of climate change before. This one is a positive one. This one does not deplete your ozone layer. It increases it. The anointing. <laughs> it, it, it changes the climate around the life of the blessed. The climate changes from negative to positive. It changes from rejection to acceptance. It changes to favor. Am I speaking to somebody here? So even if you came from a village called rejection, when you collide with the blessing, there is a climate change. There is a positive climatic change. Is God speaking to somebody here? I feel something just here now. I believe that a victim of disfavor is being delivered right now. A victim of rejection is being delivered right now. Shout power! Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. That was what happened to Jabez. He was born in sorrow. In 1 Chronicles 4, 9 and 10, he said that God should bless him. He was more honorable, but he, his mother called him Jabez because he was born in sorrow. And in verse 10, he said that the God of Israel should bless him. And when God blessed Jabez, Jabez moved from miserable to honorable or favorable by the virtue of the blessing. Proverbs chapter 5 verse 12, the Bible said, Thou, Lord, will bless the righteous with favor, sorry, Psalm 5 verse 12, for thou Lord will bless the righteous, with favor will you compass him about as with a shield. That was the blessing that was upon J Joseph in Genesis 39, 3 to 5. And his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. And Joseph found grace in his sight and he served him 
and he made him overseer over his house and all that he had he put into his hand it just changes the climate on your life how do you know a cursed person everywhere they come the door blocks against them the door closes even those who don't know them hate them before they saw them how do you know a blessed person everywhere he goes the doors open everywhere he goes people like him before they know who he is ay, ay, ay. i'm a victim of such and what a man has he can give my wife and i had been on many journeys where people say i don't know who you are but i like you i don't know who you are but i like you what do you like everything we have all manner of implicating favors doors opening unusual strange openings by the blessing of god that is coming upon somebody today. Can somebody say it louder? Amen. Amen. Anybody who has a climate that is not correct. You know when Isaac was blessing Jacob in Genesis chapter 27 and in verse 27, he said they smell. He kissed him and smelled the smell of his instrument and blessed him and said, see the smell of my son is as the smell of a field which the Lord has blessed. So the blessing changes your aroma. It changes your fragrance. <laughs> it changes your fragrance. It changes your fragrance. Pardon me. It changes your spiritual perfume. My people tell me that anywhere in the house they will know if I pass, they will know I was just was just passing. It just changes a climate around you. Anyone who came here with a wrong aroma, a wrong smell, whether it is physical or spiritual, anything around you that is making people to run from you, today it shall be dissolved by the blessing. Can somebody at least shout the loudest? Amen. Help me tell somebody by yourself. Say the blessing is changing your aroma, it's changing your fragrance, it's changing your perfume. Give the Lord a shout of praise. That was number three. Number four, the blessing releases the potentials in the life of the blessed. The blessing comes upon you. The gifts that you carry. The graces inside. What you can do that nobody has been aware. Comes out. Potentials. There are great talented anointed singers. Anointed writers. Anointed everything. No it hasn't seen the light of it. People with great administrative wisdom. It never saw the light of day. But when the blessing comes, then what you carry comes out. You know Jabez, who was born in sorrow, eventually became the builder of a city. In First Chronicles chapter 2 verse 25. And the Bible said the families of the scribes dwelt at Jabez. Jabez turned from a person to a, a, a town. But that's not what bothered me. They were the tribe, they were the family of scribes. In those days, scribes in Bible days are like administrators, secretarial administrative kind of setting. So there was an administrative capacity. Now, he founded the city of scribes because he would have been a scribe by himself. And that capacity was inside him unknown until the blessing came. Many of us seated here, you are bigger than what people see. There is something you can do nobody knows yet. 
like like David, who was a talented instrumentalist, but perishing at the backside of the desert until the anointing came on him and brought him out. There are people seated here by the blessing today. You are coming out. Something inside you is coming out. Shout the loudest say Take your seat. The blessing releases the potentials in the life of the blessed. Number five. The blessing amplifies the effort of the blessed. It amplifies the effort of the blessed. It facilitates resourcefulness and productivity. It forbids the barrenness of effort. What do I mean? Genesis chapter 1 verse 27, verse 28. And God said, be fruitful. God blessed them. And he said, be fruitful. Be fruitful means you are not permitted to labor in vain. You are not permitted to be walking and nothing is showing. Whenever you carry the blessing, you walk and the walk shows. <laughs> ay, 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 ay. There is an unusual productivity, productive capacity that comes upon the life of the blessed. Isaac was sowing in the land of famine. He was sowing in the land of famine. Genesis 26, where nobody was getting anything. And he was reaping a hundredfold. Where people were reaping zerofold. Why? The blessing of God is upon his life. Am I communicating at all to somebody? When a blessed man takes one step, he gets the result of a thousand steps that others take. I'm talking from a practitioner's point of view. My wife told me yesterday night, not, to, not, not, not 10 years ago, not 20 years ago, just last night, on our way from the Lost Garden home. Uh, okay, from the Lost Garden. He said, I like the way you live your life. I said, why? He said, at the end of your day, God will not say you wasted your life. I said, why? He said, how? See, because I was on the altar working with the musical people and, um, and then I was in the office doing other works and then I had done several things the same day. Message was available. He, she heard when I was communicating with the secretary about the message outline for today and then everything was going to... He said, God will not say you wasted your life. See, unusual productivity. He met me and a saxophonist uh, uh, playing some very, very heavenly tunes and then other things. I cannot, I can tell you it is not by power. My daughter met me in the afternoon listening to something and humming some songs and so on. I said, what do you want to do with the rest of us? What do you want the rest of us to do? You are just doing everything like that. What, will, what shall we do? Somebody say, is the blessing. And it is coming upon you today. That amen is not a good one. The last time you labored in vain shall be the last forever. Yeah. You are too young to be tired in the morning. You are too young to be tired in the afternoon. Every spirit of lethargy and laziness and weakness, I declare, it is arrested now. Somebody shout power. Look at your neighbor by yourself. Say, from today, your life shall be productive. From today. Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. Is God speaking to anybody at all? It makes you resourceful. It makes you energetic. It makes you 
enthusiastic, optimistic. It makes you audacious. It makes you kakrakaros. I'm, I'm just looking for more words. By the blessing. That was what was upon Abraham. And at the age of 120, strength was still intact. The blessing. Number six. The blessing enhances the quality and quantity of the life of the blessed. The blessing of God upon the life. Just like causes reduces life's quality. And, 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 and even life's quantity. The blessing amplifies. It enhances the quality and the quantity of a man's life. What do I mean by that? The blessing causes you to live well and live long. Live well and long. You don't just live well, you live well, you live long. Proverbs chapter 10 verse 22. The blessing of the Lord. It maketh rich. And he addeth no sorrow. The blessing of the Lord. It maketh rich. And he addeth no sorrow. It enhances the quality of your life. You are not living a no quality kind of life. It enhances and then the quantity of your life. Isaiah chapter 65 verse 8. He said, he said destroy him not for a blessing is in it. it can be cut short. How do, how do you know there is a cause? People, when they rise, they crash or at the prime they have to know their life, they are cut out, cut short. How do you know that the person is blessed? When he rises, he remains there and he keeps rising and he continues to fulfill his days. How many of you believe that the blessing is wonderful? How many of you believe that that blessing is necessary? Do you believe that? No. Don't just leave. I say, I'm a Christian, I'm this and that. Do everything you can do to be established in the blessing. That was Isaiah chapter 65 verse 8. And then finally, the blessing enlarges the capacity of the blessed. It enlarges your capacity. It deletes littleness and imparts pardon me the use of this word. It deletes littleness and imparts meganess. Life is mega. Things you do are mega. Smallness and littleness becomes abominations to the life of the blessed. God told Abraham, I will make you great. I will make your name great. And you shall be a blessing. And then in Genesis where we read about Jacob, from Jacob, he was turned into Israel. Genesis 32 verse 28. He was turned from a person to a, a, a nation. We already read about Jabez, who was a person and became a city. In 1 Chronicles chapter 2 verse 55. Somebody say amen. Can somebody say amen? Anybody believes in what I'm saying, say louder amen. We have heard the testimony of people building and dedicating houses. Very soon, it will be the dedication of estates. There are people among us who will build cities. A university is in it. Uh, uh, a manufacturing company is there. I am saying so because elephant don't give birth to rats. Are you hearing what I'm saying here? Your source determines your size. Your connection determines your collection. It determines your collection. If you see here, you see size. That is still in development. Construction is going on inside there. Right there. So that when guests coming from all across the world for August or November convention, they, may, they will have where to stay here. Right? There is meganess you can see here. Trace it back to God's servant Bishop David Oyedeko. You see meganess there. Trace it back to Pastor Adeboye. 
And if you like, just keep on tracing it. Iron sharpened iron. Lions move in the company of lions. Eagles move in the company of eagles. Am I communicating at all? And the devil can do nothing about it. Shout power! Sir, take your seat in the presence of the Lord. Whatever has narrowed your destiny, today the narrowing is over. Whatever has made your life insignificant, irrelevant, microscopic, remotely disconnected, re statistical piece of material, today it is over forever. <laughs> Lift your right and say, I matter to this generation. I matter to this generation by the blessing of God. As we try to begin to round off, what is, what are the deliverables or the blessedness of the blessing? First we said that the blessing deletes the curse so that you can understand what you are here to do this morning. Second, that the blessing brings speed and acceleration, meaning that stagnation and delay perishes. And then thirdly, that the blessing changes the climate around the life of the blessed. When people come around you, something is positive. Something is appealing, attractive, accepting. And then thought that the blessing releases the potentials in the life of the blessed. Everything God has put inside you can be made to come out by the blessing. And then that the blessing amplifies the effort of the blessed. It facilitates resourcefulness, productivity when the blessing is upon you. And then the blessing enhances the quality and quantity of the life of the blessed. You live well, you live long. The blessing make it rich, added no sorrow. And number seven, the blessing enlarges the capacity of the blessed. Conclusion, what are channels of the blessing? It's important for us to know. Because like God's servant Bishop Oyedeko said, assumption brings frustration. What are channels of the blessing? Number one, directly from God directly from God. God himself is a blesser. When you do the things that God wants you to do, his blessing comes direct. Like what? Obedience. Deuteronomy 28, 1 to 2. If you shall hearken diligently to the voice, if you shall obey me, uh, so if you, if you can listen to what God is saying to you and obey him from him directly, blessings can come from for you. Second, B, service. You shall serve the Lord your God and he shall bless your bread and your water. You don't just sit in church and do nothing. You don't just, you, you, you sit in church and contribute to the enlargement of the house and enlargement of the kingdom. You are there and you are contributing to what is happening there. You serve in soul winning. You serve in in-house service. You serve in seeds. So directly from God, one, a is no, no no channels of the blessing is directly from God and then you do the things God wants you to do the first thing God wants you to do is obedience B is service B is service and C is uprightness Psalm 5 verse 12 Thou, Lord, will bless the righteous. With favor will you compass him as with a shield. Psalm 24, verse 4 to 6. He that has clean hands, a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. Somebody say a loud amen. amen. So what do you, what, how, do, what, how does the blessing come to you directly from God? And what do you do? First of all, you obey God according to Deuteronomy 28, 1 to 2. 
Obey God according to Deuteronomy 28, 1 to 2. And then secondly, you, you serve God according to Exodus 20, 23, 25. And then you live in uprightness. He said, these people who have clean hands are the generation that are blessed. And finally, D, tithes and offerings. Malachi chapter 3. 3 verse 10 all the way to verse 12 bring ye all the tithes into the stars that there may be meat in my house and prove me now here with if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing so when you do these four things among other things you are connecting direct blessing from God am I communicating so what are channels of the blessing number one directly from God number two through parents Through parents. Parents are scriptural channels of the blessing. In Genesis 27, verse 25 to 28, when Jacob brought venison to his father, he said, bring Eat near to me and I will eat of my son's venison that my soul may bless you. And he brought it near to him and he did it and brought him wine and he drank. And, 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 and his father Isaac said unto him, come near my son and kiss me. And verse 27, he began to bless him. Parents are channels of the blessing. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 1 to 3. He said, children obey your parents in the Lord for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with you. You honor your father, you honor your mother, not so that it can be well with them, that it may be well with you, that you may live long on the earth. That is what is called the blessing, that it may be well with you. Parents are custodians of the blessing. My mother was a major blesser, major blesser. One day we did night vigil, night till morning, and she was under the influence of the Holy Ghost, prophesying and declaring. Most of the things that we are seeing today, she saw them and was prophesying them. Oh, I can see a very big expanse of land. I can see this, I can see that. Your enemies will never see you for I. <laughs> All manner from the heart of the mother. One day I took Christmas food home and I bought two batches one in the, for the house my father's house in the village and another one for the one in the town and I handed it to him and my father looked at me and he said you have seen nothing yet so you took care of us like this for Christmas and you remember that there, are, there is house in the village and house in the town then he began to mention, do you know so and so man of God? He was mentioning people who have impacted their world that he knows. You know him? You have heard of him? I said yes. He said that is the realm you are. And you'll cross that realm. From his heart. Papu Yedeko said when he graduated and bought a set of chairs for his grandmother. He changed it. And his grandmother said, your children will do far more for you. And blessed him, and blessed him, and blessed him. Papa Adeboye's mother told him, my son, if you say one person come, 10,000, 1,000 will arrive. Is it happening? Do everything you can to secure parental blessing, not parental anger, not parental causes, not parental unhappiness. All you can. Someone say amen. amen. I can't remember talking back to my mother once. I can't remember talking back to my father in exchange of word once. Don't do that. 
Now, there are some people who have mothers and fathers who are more like um, agents of the devil. That's another case. That is where you almost kill yourself for your mother or your father. And it doesn't care. Maybe it's in witchcraft or it's in the occult. And like I just preached, there are fathers who are specialists in cursing and cursing. That is why you are here today. Anyone that has a negative parental cover, today it shall be nullified. Whatever they have spoken against your life, that is working against your life, shall be nullified. Shout the loudest, amen. Shout the loudest, amen. Don't, don't just hate them in return. Don't hate them in return. Exercise your conscience to be void of offense with God and man. And like Moses reversed the curse on Reuben, a prophet, a priest over your life can reverse the curse. So we have directly from God and then number two, through parents and number three, through priests or prophets. Your priest, your prophet is a custodian of your blessing. Genesis chapter 12 verse 3 God speaking to Abraham said I will bless them that bless you and I will curse him that curse you. Abraham you are my priest and prophet whatever people do to you or for you or with you determines what I do with them. Whatever. In Numbers chapter 6 verse 23, God speaking to the priest said, on this wise shall the priest bless the people. Hebrews chapter 7 verse 7, it says without all contradiction, the less is blessed of the better. Somebody say amen. Your pastor and your priest is a custodian of your blessing if you do it well you follow well you relate well you connect well you don't have a limit when you are under parental cover I'm aware of my life where God has helped us to be and we are still on the journey I am aware of my contemporaries who have no respect for priest or spiritual father or mentor I'm aware of some of them. And I'm aware that there are some of them also in ministry who cannot count a hundred people or even 50. Who is your father? Nobody. Who is your pastor? Nobody. Who is your mentor? Nobody. Meanwhile, my mentor will tell me after some interactive sessions. And he said, Pastor Paul, you have seen nothing yet. Then he will say, see what I just did. You will do the same. Word for word. <laughs> Himself, God servant Bishop Oedipo, when he was still in Kaduna, one day the Archbishop of the House of Blessed Memory was ministering in Makodi. And he said, David, where are you now? He said, I'm in Kaduna. Where do you want me to be? He said, I want you to be in Makodi now. He said, yes, sir. He suspended all his activities and drove like Jehu. I went and met him there within how many hours? Maybe five hours or more. Or six, 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 six seven hours. And he arrived. And the lion looked at him and said, I asked you to come. And you came without delay. He said, from today. I release upon you the gift of on time. He said, everything will be on time for you. He said, before the needs arise in your life, the supplies will be waiting. Money can't buy such a blessing. There is nothing that can buy such a blessing. When you touch the heart of whoever is 
father in your life and he releases upon you or when you are even generally in the congregation and you relate correctly or you position yourself right you are covered somebody say amen I tell myself I said my father in the Lord has I have his backing my physical parents I have their backing Jehovah Almighty God, I have his backing above all. It doesn't matter who fronts me or who is in my front to hell with the devil and his agents. Somebody say amen. Take your seat. Very, very important. That is number three channel through priests or prophets and finally through the poor. The poor or the less privileged. Somebody is saying, how can the poor be a source of my blessing? <laughs> Lord, my, my time is, is going. But can you give, be patient with me to take this last point? Through the poor. Look at Job chapter 29 verse 11. Job chapter 29 verse 11. He said, when the ear heard me, Job is the one talking. You know, whenever I speak, they will bless me. When the eye saw me, it gave witness to me. Why? Because I delivered the poor that cried, and the fatherless, and him that had none to help me. The blessing of him that was ready to perish came upon me. Did you see that? That is, the person was about to die. I delivered him from his destruction. Then he, he released upon me blessing. Get me another translation so we can understand that. Shut up. All who heard, no, 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 that particular verse I just read. I helped those without hope, and they did what? Read it well, one more time. I helped those without hope, and they did what? And I caused the widow's heart to sing for joy. Continue in this translation. Everything I did was honest. Righteousness covered me like a robe. I wore justice like a turban. I served as eyes for the blind. So I ensured that the blind did not feel their lack of sight. I was fit to the lame. I was a father to the poor and I assisted strangers. Who needed help? Hey. Hey. Do you want to go far in life? Let some hopeless people release blessing on your life. <laughs> when they bless you, it is from their heart. I have received such blessings plenty times. I went to Lokoja some time ago to preach. I heard about a man who has been, was a pastor and then retired and had been preaching for about 50 something years and has retired. This man was like 90 something years or so. And I went to visit him. And when I arrived with my wife, I saw his young looking wife who was about um, 70 something to 80 something years. And, and, and I gave him agbadas and clothes and things and money. And he looked at me and he said, when you are this age, you will be stronger. <laughs> One day we're driving at, um, this will be like 12 or more years ago, many, many years. Maybe close to 20. Then about five or six years after our church started in the rear one area, we're driving. I saw an old woman moving with stick. I was shocked. I said, Are there such old people in Abuja town? Moving. So we parked the car. I said, Driver, ask this woman, where is she going? We asked, say, Mama, Mama, where are you going? We said, oh, I'm going there. It's okay. Can we, can we carry you? You say, thank you, sir. We carried mama in the car. I went and dropped her. And it wasn't far. 
very, very nearby. Maybe it was an angel because it was literally nowhere. Just about five minutes or something, say, it is here I want to drop. I said, ah. And he said, he said, my son, you saw me and you just carried me like that. He well with you. He well with your children. She blessed, she blessed, she blessed. I carried the blessing, pocketed it. The blessing of him that wanted to perish. I don't know the countless numbers of parents we help their children in school, with school fees. We are still doing that. Widows and orphans. There is an orphanage in Abuja here that we bought a house for. The owner of the orphanage told us, he said, that they are about to demolish them in Ducey and they don't have where to go. They are about to buy a house. We say we can assist you. And we bought the house for them. I think they raised like five million or something and they don't have the, the money anymore. And we supported and ended the matter with the rest. I think they are around the poor or somewhere in Garcia or something now. The day we went to dedicate the, the, the orphanage, our picture was by the wall. And all the children ran to us. The woman said, that is daddy and mommy that gave us house. They ran. They prayed for us. You know what she said? You see, the picture on the wall, they, are, they lay their hand on it daily. Orphans. That is why one zillion, quadrillion, centillion demons from hell cannot shake what we do. Those for us are far more than demons and agents of hell that are against us. The force is what is working for us is heavier than anything that can ever work against us. Anything. And the good thing is you connect the blessing from all the sources. You connect through God directly. You connect through the, 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 the apparent. You connect through the prophet. You connect through the poor. And you're on your way. How many of you know the reason for the greatness of Solomon? I'll tell you shortly. Psalm 72. I think I should round off with that. If you look at the top of the Bible, Psalm 72, the very top of it, before you started reading, the Bible calls it a psalm for Solomon. Now let's read verse 10 to 15. That was Solomon's psalm. He said, the kings of Tarshish and of the isle shall bring presents. The kings of Sheba and Seba shall offer gifts. Yeah. All kings shall fall down before him. All nations shall serve him. Now like I told you, it was Solomon's psalm. If you, that is, David wrote it for Solomon. If you re read the heading of the psalm, it, it, it's tied to the psalm for Solomon. Why will all kings bend down for him? See, for he shall deliver the needy when he crieth, the poor also, and him that has no helper. He shall spare the poor and the needy. He shall save the souls of the needy. He shall redeem their soul from deceit and violence. And precious shall their blood be in his sight. And he shall live no matter what the devil does. He shall live. And to him shall be given of the gold of Sheba. Why? Prayer shall be made for him. Stand up on your feet. Let me stop there. Let me stop there. Prayer shall be made for him continually and daily shall he be praised. He has impacted so many lives to the point where on a daily basis somebody is praying for him. Prayer shall be made for him continually. My brothers and sisters, don't wait for millions before you start helping people. There are school fees that are 500 naira. I remember primary school, some, one woman came to me one day and he said, Pastor, my, I have lost my husband. My child is about to drop out of school and uh, there is no money. Pray for us, for God to help us get money. 
I told the woman, I said, this is not a prayer point. <laughs> it's a money point. <laughs> I won't pray for you. I will give you the money. And for as long as this child is in school, come for, her, for the school fees. That money at that time, I think, was five. It was LGC Garki. If you look at that, 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 I think it was, it was in Naira. Naira like 500. It wasn't 1,000. It wasn't near 1,000. It was a no money at all. And yet she didn't have it. Can I see somebody's child? You can assist. Just start from where you are. And then suddenly, it start growing. They brought me a, a, the, the bill for how many children going to the university this last week that we are, we are taking care of. The whole school fees of that group of people, some in 200 level, some in 100 level, going all the way to five. five it was not, including the medical student, it wasn't more than two point something million. That's school fees. Just last week. Daily. Continuously shall he be prayed. So connect all these prayer channels, these blessing channels, and you are on your way to destiny. How many people receive something today? It is blessing Sunday. And you shall not live here with any curse. Lift your hands and give it all the praise. Give him the praise. Lift your hands, lift your voice. Father, thank you. Father, thank you. Father, thank you. El Shaddai, thank you. Adonai, thank you. Jehovah, thank you. We worship you. We honor you. We adore you. We magnify you. Lift your hands and your voice and say, Father, I come before you today. Help me, Lord, to connect directly from you the blessing. Help me, Lord, to connect spiritual and physical parental blessings. Help me to align with the blessing of my priest and prophet help me to be open to be a blessing to the less privileged so I can connect the blessing